Hey guys, how's it going? So have you guys ever wondered how to program your own like self-driving car? Ever since the concept of self-driving cars was around, I was always very interested, but I never thought that I would be able to do something like that. You know, it's always one of those things that seems pretty daunting and reserved for only like the elite. But about a year or so ago, AWS announced something called the Deep Racer. The AWS Deep Racer is essentially just an RC car that they like slapped on the AWS Deep Lens onto it. The AWS Deep Lens is this like square camera that's used for machine learning. So if you've never uh, done machine learning before, I'm not a machine learning expert. I was able to pick it up pretty quickly. And essentially the AWS Deep Racer is, uh, was built mainly for this purpose. It's to give you essentially training wheels to you know teach you how to do machine learning. Yeah, so behind the scene, AWS uses like something called SageMaker and RoboMaker and like Kinesis to be able to put all of these things together. So for you as a developer, you just have a simple UI where you change your action spaces, your hyperparameters, and most, most importantly, you know, add your reward function. And that essentially allows you to train your model and then that model can be loaded into a virtual racetrack and also to a real car uh, in, if you're going to like a real race. But the whole idea is you're going to be able to, in this tutorial, if you follow along, you're going to be able to make your own self-driving car model. So yeah, without further ado, let's dive into the console and I'll show you around. All right, so the first thing you need to do is just navigate to the AWS Deep Racer like homepage. Um, this just gives you some you know marketing information about what uh, the AWS Deep Racer is about. So you do need an AWS account. Um, it's super easy. You just sign up. It's basically like getting a Prime account. So I'm gonna log. So one thing that you need to know is that for the AWS Deep Racer, you need to be in the US East One, which is North Virginia. That's the only region I think it supports it right now. Um, if if you don't have it, it will like it will probably prompt you and say, "Hey, you need to be in that region." So go ahead and switch it. You can find the service by just typing AWS Deep Racer. Deep Racer. So when you first uh, go to this page, you'll see this get started with reinforcement learning and this essentially is the flow, right? So go ahead, you you know, create a model, you train a model, you evaluate it, and then you could even like join the league and then submit your model. And um, but yeah, so the first thing you need to do is follow this kind of instructions, and you have to create these roles. And all it is is a simple click of a button. It costs no money to do this, so just go ahead and click uh, click this button, and all this like deep racer uh, resource stack will be created for you. It takes about five minutes. And then the next part is um, you could look at this like optional like uh, like basically it's learning the basics about reinforcement learning. Um, it's actually really it's it's a really well done document. So I highly recommend you guys to you know look through this and how everything works. In this tutorial, I'm just gonna go over all these different like parameters that you need to like worry about, right? In essence, the Deep Racer is all about making a uh, a model that knows how to drive itself. So when you go to click a model, um, essentially it will take you to the flow. Um, it's just a form that you fill out. Um, and uh, let's just go through it one by one, right? And before, um, but actually before I like get too into this, there's one tidbit that I need to mention that um, this will cost you like money to be able to train your models for a long time. But um, they, I believe AWS has a free tier of 10 hours or so worth of training. So um, just be mindful of that, and you know, look, make sure you're looking at your costs up, you know, cost uh, budgeting, like resource management, like dashboard, to make sure that you're not incurring extra charges if you're just uh, testing it out, right? So yeah, so so just be mindful of that. But anyways, moving on. So um, the first thing you need to do is create like a model name. So this could be anything, but generally you want to, the, the good standard practice is like have a descriptive name and like version your models essentially. Um, I just, I, I, I usually go with like Batmobile uh, and then it could be like V1 or something like that, right? These are valid characters. Um, Anyways, and then here you do like a description, right? So you can say this is a test model for a YouTube video, for example. 
And then now these are like the different tracks. Now, uh, essentially uh, what the track is, you'll see in uh, the video soon, but so you can select any of these tracks and then your car will be trained on this particular track, right? Um, I usually just train it on this reInvent 2018, but uh, I think some of these other ones might be interesting to do. The thing is, uh, the way the reward function works and the, uh, the way, based on how you set your reward function, uh, based on what track you train it on, the um, results may vary greatly. So that's the track, uh, basically what the virtual track is that you're going to be training your model in. And here is uh, the first like really important bit, which is the action space. Now, um, the model that you are given, essentially the, um, the reward what the reward function operates on, um, just knows about these action spaces, right? So here you could change the maximum steering angle. Um, so what this means is like, how, what's the degrees at that, what's the largest degree that this your car can make right and then the steering angle granularity is um you'll see right here the different angles that the car can make turns at so if you do like really low granularity it could only make like jagged turns for example and then here's the max speed i always go to the max speed uh as high as possible which is eight i believe and here's a speed granularity this is the same thing so if you do like one for example always go to like I think this is meters per second um, uh, and then like granularity three would be like oh there's a higher granularity so there's more that the car can do so this is like the first uh, thing about like self-driving cars like how do you know which which of these variables work well right you you kind of have to test it and it, it will depend on um, your reward function but for example you know like maybe you want to make sure that the car can go as fast as possible um, and maybe you want to not make it go so slow if possible um, and then for steering having a lot of steering points may be like a good thing you know instead of making jagged turns you make gradual turns so those are these are like some of the thought processes that you need to think about when you're um, you know uh, creating your model so these are all the possible action spaces, essentially, um, action lists, they call it, for your car. And it's just a combination of the degrees that you can turn and then this, um, the speed that your car can be um, going at, essentially. So now this is like the meat of uh, the code. It's just a Python script. And the way, um, from my understanding, the way this works is this is your reward function and it takes in a uh, params and this will be this function reward function gets executed like almost every second or so right like basically when the car is running uh for any given like second or so it runs this uh, it's faster than a second but like basically for every like loop of the runtime it runs this reward function and then based on these reward that gets returned it will like just say the the model your card is doing good versus it's doing bad um so essentially it uses this data to uh change and train your model to look at a specific image of uh, what the car the camera is receiving and say hey at this point i should be turning like left or right or it's it's basically just learning uh the image that it gets and then based on these reward functions it outputs a specific like action it needs to take um, and that's essentially the crux of it right that's like essentially how this car learns how to drive itself now there's many strategies on reward functions this one it looks like it's just a simple stay in the middle um, like center of track strategy so what they do is they grab the distance from the center and then they have like different markers and based on where the car is in the marker distance from the center they give different um values of the point and this right here uh this one e minus three is like the worst possible reward so it's saying that if it's off the track then like it's you know give it the worst points and then it returns a float and then when you start uh when you see this run you'll see this like linear graph and that's how you know that's like one tip that you you have a good model going because that means it's getting better right you're you're accumulating more rewards 
So here is the next part, which is the hyperparameters, which I'm still kind of struggling to grasp because this, uh, all of these like gradient, descent, batch size, uh, number of epochs, learning array, entropy, like discount factor, all of these things are very specific to like traditional machine learning terminology. And since I'm not a machine learning engineer, nor am I like an actuary or something like that, that who, who's really good with these kind of like model creations, I'm I'm actually really in the dark with all of these things but so I haven't touched a lot of these and I'm doing research on all of these things to get better at it but all the all of my research I've done so far says that these hyperparameters are really hard to like guess at or like pick correctly and it takes a lot of um, experience to be able to understand when to change this uh, based on the reward function and action spaces that you have um, But yeah, so that's it and and right here is the stop condition. It's basically saying how long do you want to train? Uh, your model one thing you need to consider is that models can be uh, essentially overtrained, so don't train them too long um, But that really the, the time it takes for the training really depends on some of these hyperparameters um, for example this discount factor I, I or entropy, I forgot one of the one of them would affect your model. Basically, it learns slow, but it, it takes into account more variations, right? Um, so you will need like a longer training time, essentially, for something like that. But I, I'm still not really 100% uh, sure on that. So I will just leave for if you're just testing it out, getting your feet wet, test these out just as these, uh, just as is, and then um, do some research and then learn about it, and then you know try some different things. So the maximum stop time, I usually just say 60 minutes is a good, um, like good enough, but two hours was my sweet spot for most of these models. So um, I'm just gonna run it at, uh, I'm just gonna give it two hours. Uh, actually, I'll just give it uh, 60 minutes and then let's go ahead and start training. Now, uh, what this does is it creates all these like different resources. I didn't. I don't know if you could go back in the video and see it, but it showed exactly what it's gonna create. So, um, but yeah. Anyways, let's go up to services. And one one pro tip is that um, when you're training, when you're training, you won't be able to see like your video. I mean, you could kind of see it, but you could you could go to this like Kinesis stream which is essentially just a real-time streaming data service that AWS has and then it will create a stream of your video for you and you can see right here it's been created and then this media preview will pop up once uh, the car is starting to train so the track has come up and your car is getting ready and soon you'll see this car like starting to drive okay so there it goes so you see how like the car is going and this so the way from right from what I read the car will like start driving and then the uh, essentially it will try to make a random decision of like turning changing the angle it and then based on that um, if it goes out or does something that our reinforcement our rear for our reward function is like negative negatively like punishing then it will remember that and then it will modify its model essentially like the fundamentals of like reinforcement learning right you know they reward good behavior and the car tries to minimize the bad behavior but yeah so uh so when i was doing like research on this like there were so many different like um like strategies there's something called the pure pursuit where you um you essentially like look ahead at the next like waypoints that you're trying to get to and then you calculate you, you make a turn um you i mean you look at where the car is and you look at the waypoint and then you make you essentially say hey what's the degrees that i need to turn to point to the next waypoint and it does this like every um like iteration so it essentially like follows a path based on the waypoints um, that's called pure pursuit and the other thing that was really interesting which um, they called it a self motivator and what that is is the whole concept of saying hey like wh who do you think you are right like are you 
do you really think you know the best way to drive you know what's to say that we've been driving wrong this whole time like humans you know learn from each other to learn how to drive but who's to say that's the most optimal way to drive for example so it's all it is is you give it like basic parameters saying hey this is the rewards stay on track for example and everything else you just do on your own and figure it out and surprisingly that will work um, I'll link in the uh, descriptions below on this like awesome article that I read that talked about these like methods for the reward functions but yeah so let's go quickly back to our um, deep racer dashboard sometimes the simulation video um, you can't see it you see how it's really slow like that that's why I was uh, suggesting you look at the kinesis stream because if you're not in the East Coast this could be really slow but you see this reward graph how it's going up that means it's um, generally you want to see that linear graph going up um, because that means there's more the the model the, as long as that graph is going up consistently uh, that means that the there's more room for the model to get better because it's lasting longer in the track without falling off and things like that but all of these you'll get a like hang of and yeah that's pretty much it for training the model um, I'm gonna let it go for 60 minutes and I'll be back to finish up this video but um, to do to run the evaluation essentially so yeah I'll be right back all right and we're back sorry I had to change rooms my wife fell asleep so <laughs> I'm in the guest room right now but anyways um when your uh, model finishes training based on that completion time that you gave it, uh, basically you could do this evaluation. Um, you could also look at how the training went. As, like When I look at this, I, I think this model could probably train longer because uh, you see this like linear graph. Um, that means that uh, more likely there's more rewards that could be earned for this particular model. But let's go ahead and try the evaluation now. Let's use the reinvent 2018 track and then it will essentially stream my video. All right, it looks like it's initializing and then basically when it's ready, the car will run laps essentially and as soon as it falls off the track, it will uh, reset itself. Oh, look at it go. It's Okay, so it's, it's, it's somehow st like barely managing on to stay on the track. Uh, it's lagging a little bit it looks like it, uh, it failed a second attempt so it's the video is lagging behind a little bit but I mean it, it was able to successfully finish in like uh, at least one of the runs if you can see right here so yeah uh, when I look at this model and looking at this reward graph I think if I had another hour of training the model will perform a lot better and as you can see it was a lot more like curvy is because it doesn't really know how to drive straight it just knows how to stay on the track essentially. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video on the AWS Deep Racer. There's so much that I still don't know uh, about uh, all the hyperparameters and all these different like variables and how everything works uh, you know deeply I just got a, a simple taste of it when I was racing it but you know there's definitely something about like being able to intuitively think of these like different um, you know strategies you know like um, like the self pursuit and things like that uh, and just be introduced to these concepts of machine learning and it, it like brings it closer you know that whole practice you know de demystifies it a little bit so yeah I hope you guys just think this video encourages you guys to you know check out this space you know it's it's uh, something that everyone's talking about and you know not everyone really understands what it is and what uh, machine learning and AI is capable of but yeah it, like just get into it you know just like everything there's stepping stones and this is one of them so yeah I hope you guys uh, like this video um, thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video bye